Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, it was huge news yesterday out of the Florida legal system as former Broward County uh, Deputy and School Resource Officer Scott Peterson was found not guilty on multiple, multiple counts of child neglect. We're going to go back. We're going to rehash that horrible, horrible story. We're going to take a look at the law do a little armchair quarterbacking and see if the jury maybe got this one right or maybe they got it wrong or somewhere in between. But today we do need to have a pretty frank discussion about should being a coward be a crime? Okay, so newsflash yesterday, we found out that former Broward County uh, Sheriff's Deputy and School Resource Officer Scott Peterson, who had been charged with 17 counts of felony child neglect, was found not guilty on all counts after what was otherwise a gut-wrenching and very emotional trial. Now, to go back in our time machine, just so to get us up to speed, in February of 2018, a deranged young man named Nicholas Cruz headed into the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas School, High School in Parkland, Florida, and absolutely shot the place up, killing 17 young individuals. Now, at the time, um, re School Resource Officer Peterson was working on the campus, but videotape captured that he remained outside the building while student after student after student was killed. Now, he claimed that he could not tell from which building the gunshots were coming from, and there were other deputies whose testimony was offered at trial that corroborated that they too had a hard time trying to distinguish which actual building the gunshots were coming from. Of course, Deputy Peterson never went and swept any building, never went to try to investigate where the shots might be coming from. As a matter of fact, he didn't enter the building until law enforcement had been on the scene for 40 minutes. Now, all along, Deputy Peterson claimed that he had done nothing wrong and had not done anything in any way, shape, or form to contribute to the horrific injuries and deaths that occurred that day at the high school. Now, I agree with part of what Deputy Peterson said, that he himself did not contribute to any of the deaths. But let us not forget what his exact purpose was of being there. And let us not also forget that all of us in the 2A community routinely talk about the best way to stop a bad person with a gun is a good person with a gun. Of course, that presumes that the good person with the gun will actually act. And it certainly presumes that a person who is paid to be there to engage in that exact activity would actually follow through, but that is not what occurred on this horrible day. Now, you can imagine the outrage at Deputy Peterson and every label that's been given to him. The most common one, of course, is coward, and that may be entirely possible. But the question is, is being a coward, if that is the case, is that actually a crime? Well, we had an opportunity to take a look at the applicable statutes, and this is what we found. Now, one of the big arguments from the defense in this case is that when you took a look at the definition of caregiver, when you took a look at the definition of neglect under Florida law, that Officer Peterson in his school resource officer capacity did not fit within that definition. And if that were the case, then there would have been no legal duty under the law for him to act in any particular way, and therefore his acts could not be construed as neglect. Now, we have yet to talk to any of the attorneys who tried this case. We've yet to hear from the jurors, so we do not know what their exact reasoning was for the outright acquittal of everything, but it could have very well have been that the jury believed the law did not apply. This is how Florida law defines child neglect. Neglect of a child means, one, a caregiver's failure or omission to provide a child with the care, supervision, and services necessary to maintain the child's physical and mental health, including but not limited to food, nutrition, clothing, shelter, supervision, medicine, and medical services that a prudent person would consider essential for the well-being of the child, or a caregiver's failure to make a reasonable effort to protect a child from abuse, neglect, or exploitation by another person. Okay, so then how does Florida law define caregiver? Well, it's defined as follows. Caregiver means the parent, legal custodian, permanent guardian, 
adult household member, or other person responsible for a child's welfare as defined in subsection 54. So we know that Officer Peterson cannot fall into any of those first several categories, but is he a person that's responsible for the child's welfare? Now our gut instinct is, well, he's the school resource officer. Of course, he's there to protect every child's welfare. Florida law, however, defines it as, other persons responsible for a child's welfare includes the child's legal guardian or foster parent, an employee of any alcohol, public or private child daycare center, residential home, institution, facility, or agency, a law enforcement officer employed in any facility, service, or program for children that is operated or contracted by the Department of Juvenile Justice, or any other person legally responsible for the child's welfare in a residential setting, and also includes an adult sitter or relative entrusted with a child's care. For the purpose of departmental investigative jurisdiction, this definition does not include the following persons when they are acting in an official capacity. Law enforcement officers, except as otherwise provided in this subsection, employees of or municipal county detention facilities or employees of the Department of Corrections. So we keep looking for that one catch-all or that one description that would actually prove that Officer Peterson was in fact a legal caregiver by Florida law. But it appears that that is not the case. And it also appears that a school resource officer is treated quite differently than an actual law enforcement officer that is engaged in those duties. Whatever it may be, here's the bottom line, is that none of this changes what happened that horrible day back in 2018. It doesn't bring back any of these kids. I do believe that had Officer Peterson done his job that day, we'd still be talking about this horrific incident, but at least we might not be talking about as many injuries and as many fatalities. But even in the year 2023 in the United States of America, apparently being a coward is not a crime. Listen, you may have more questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. You guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now, but if you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.